Mm -hmm. Parents are the best ones to make the decisions that they need to make for their household. I'm not going to I'm not going to make the decisions for your household, Tony. No, you're not. You're not going to make the decisions <laughs> for my household because those are going to look a little bit different. But but we need to make those decisions in our household for the kids that God gave us. Right. Well, hello, you guys. <laughs> We're in another episode of the Still Coloring Podcast. I'm so excited for so many reasons. My pits are sweating. Let me just say this. We're in a season. It's called Little Kids, Big Feelings, and it's been going so great. And I have been itching to do this specific interview because a lot of my guests are people that I've maybe never met in person, but like I follow their brand and I love it. And I'm like, oh, they would be so beneficial to my audience. There's been other people on that's like, oh, this is my friend and she's crushing it at mom life and she's got this brand and I just need to bring her on. I do not think there is another brand that has changed, drastically changed my life like Moms on Call. I oh. just don't think the people understand. I posted about it. Maybe they do understand. But I want you guys to know two things. When I had my son, which was eight years after my daughter, it was, first of all, not like riding a bike. The people lied to you. My body didn't know what she was doing. My brain didn't know what she was doing. And my emotions did not know what she was doing, baby. Okay, listen. They were like, oh, second baby, he's going to slide out like he's on a freaking water slide. I said, well, you're all liars, okay? Because my body <laughs> rejected it. I was in labor for days, okay? I just want to say that. <laughs> I want to say that first and foremost. My... Intellect and emotions did not remember it. I remember one time I was holding my little baby and his little neck flopped. I said, oh, Jesus, you can't hold your neck up. I had forgotten because it's not like riding a bike. Right. And the third thing that I want to say is I remember the moment at five weeks when I almost cursed my husband out. Now, I'm a Christian. Praise the Lord. I don't use those words anymore. Thank you, God. All right. You're saving me every day through the Holy Spirit. But I legitimately turned on him because for five weeks I was downstairs with my newborn baby on the couch while he was in a little mini crib next to me. And it is like I had forgotten that everyone on the entire planet is on a schedule. And I had believed that this tiny human did not need to be on one, that we were just going to live our lives together. And my husband came in in the wee hours of the night to get himself some water. And he turned on a light and I lost it. Dinner. Because I was so sleep deprived. Right. I said, we're about to lose our marriage out here. Yeah. And I don't know who it was. But maybe I text you, Laura. I don't even know. I was so sleep deprived. I don't remember anything. All of my brain cells are still recovering from that season. But somebody was like, I, somehow I ended up on the Moms on Call page like, I'm ordering the books. This baby is getting on a schedule. This is nuts right now. Because I'm getting ready to release my first trade book. And I'm going to be on a 20-city tour. And I have to bring my baby in a nanny because I'm breastfeeding. And I need some help right now. And at eight weeks, my son was sleeping from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And me and my husband had fallen back in love again. <laughs> and <laughs> my sanity returned after three freaking weeks. And I send every, when I tell you, I could meet someone random on the side of the road and they're pregnant, and I'm like, I'm going to send you the Moms on Call book. I know that if y'all look at your records on your website, you will see that Tony Collier has bought these books for multiple people. Then I got hit like two weeks ago that y'all on Amazon. I was like, oh, this is even better. One of my friends, I have ordered two books in the past month on Amazon. It has gotten there same day, next day for new parents because I'm like, this will change your life forever and ever and ever. And so to make a long story short, I am very excited about having you two on the podcast. Laura and Jennifer are in the building, founders of Moms on Call. How are y'all doing? I just am grateful. <laughs> oh, Tony. I'm so Tony. grateful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Who would have thought, right? All those. So you and I met when I was doing, helping with the, the school yep. stuff and FCA. I was a, I was a youth you pastor. Yeah. Yep, and you and your husband and I had come to speak at McEachern High School. Yep. And I was like, hey, girl. And I knew everything that you did. And even when I was at North Point, I saw you speak. I'm like, I know all the things. But I was so desperate and sleep deprived and lacked brain cell function 
when I had this newborn that I just, I don't know what happened. But the, by the grace and the redemption of the Lord, I found Moms on Call. And it might, let me just, I'm going to reiterate this. I'm, I'm a raving fan. I need you to know this. <laughs> My son has 12 teeth. 12. Oh, He's gosh. one years old. He has a lot of teeth. There has not been one night of uninterrupted sleep. Not Aww. one singular night because he's Love teething. It. And you know what I feel, girls? That they lie to us. People will the people will come to you with all the best intentions and they'll say, oh, the newborn phase, you're not going to get any sleep. You're going to hate your spouse. Life is going to be really horrible. You'll never sleep again. Da, la, 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 la. You liars. All of you liars. Yeah. And maybe yeah. you have good intention. But right. that's not true. You can do this well. And that is what you guys have gifted me and the rest of the world with all the resources from courses to books. I mean, I am a fan, okay, to one-on-one -on -one sessions. You guys do consulting sessions with new moms and dads. Okay, I'm fine. Everything's fine. This is not a shameless <laughs> plug because I'm unashamed. And we're going to hop into the interview now, okay? Um, why did no, you guys we never get tired of these stories though? <laughs> no, Thank you so much it's because crazy. we do like we've had dads like stop each other at the airport and from like other countries, and yeah. they're just like, Oh, are you pregnant? There's three words we need to Mom. tell you. So we get these stories and it amazes us all the time. Like Laura and I are still like, you know, we wrote this little pamphlet, whatever. It is unbelievable to us and to think that what we went through, very similar to what you went through. We thought we broke my youngest son, even as a pediatric nurse, because when we were holding him too close, his little ear folded over and then it didn't fold back oh. for a, a hot second, right? We're like, we've broken him. He's like three days old. We he broke. broke. He yeah, broke. So, he don't have an ear no more. Okay. Right. So, you know, we went through all of this ourselves and we wanted moms to have some way, moms and dads and caregivers, you can't even like add and subtract whole numbers like you're sleep deprived you've just been through the most emotional experience of your life and you're excited and running on adrenaline your hormones are crazy and so just to have like a simple resource it's like no we don't need 365 pages of what to do just in case or what ifs we just need what is it when do i need to call the doctor what am i supposed to do right now yeah outline format and that's what was really important to us. And to yes. think that those principles and those things that Laura and I went through, oh my goodness, the stories that we share together because we yeah. don't mom alone, which we've talked about before. We do not. Um, yeah. Is, is so exciting to I receive know. your excitement about this because we absolutely love it every day that we hear that it is doing what it is purposed to do, which is so much bigger than Laura or I. But yes. to be able to work with this woman who you've seen and you've heard speak, Come I on, mean, Lord. it is unbelievable and amazing. Oh, Laura, yeah. Yeah. what was your purpose and intent behind it? How do you feel I about seeing moms on call in the world quite literally changing lives? Well, it is surreal, right? Because Jennifer and I really didn't set out to create this incredible thing that's around the world. And I did a consult last week with a sweet mama in Kuwait. Like, who gets to do what? that, right? I didn't and, think you were going to say that. Wow. Yes, right? And, but it was a folder. And it was out of that heart of Jennifer yeah. and I answering call after call in our real jobs, right? Taking care of our eight children between us. And we were like, wait, we, we have to be able to partner with these families right where they are. And that little purple folder back in the day, we would print off of the computer and, you know, take that folder into the homes here in Atlanta. And that is how it started. From that point came the book and the online courses and the apps and all the things that happen and the podcast, you know, yeah. but it was a heart of necessity. That, that's where it came. We, it was a necessity. Yeah. Andy says this, Andy Stanley says this all the time, do what you can do for one, what you wish you could do for many. And oh. it's like, you guys were doing that for a long time. There was just yep. moms that were like, help me, I don't have a brain. And you showed up <laughs> and you got a purple folder and you got a yep. schedule and you did it. it. And then by the grace of the Lord, you said, oh, wow, like many, many moms need this, like maybe everyone. And so we have to package this in a way that still 
Kids have felt need because, baby, people sent me so many books that were 19 million pages long. And I'm like, who? what you talking about? I can't see straight. I don't even know if where my contacts are. My glasses are filled with breast milk. I don't know what you're talking about right now. These books that you guys have produced, it's so funny because there's literally like a line, <laughs> like lines in there that's like, put your baby down, turn the light off, close the door, walk away. <laughs> exactly. And I, could just, I literally <laughs> remember like having the book in one hand, like cusping between my fingers, baby in the other hand. I'm like, okay, set it down. It like, right. This is my yeah. second kid though. This is how like, hard and difficult it is to birth a child. It doesn't even, it's your second, third, fourth, fifth. This can be useful forever. Like however many of these whippersnappers you're deciding to have here, okay? <laughs> like it just is this like reset because you're not in the newborn phase every day of your life. Right. When you have a kid, right? Like there's like one and two and five and nine like I have right now. And what I'm trying to do right now is to make sure that she's not showing her glory, okay? Her booty. Right with short shorts on, okay? Oh, yeah. So you're not in Absolutely. this phase, right, a lot. And so this is a resource that could last you yeah. um, as you continue to have kids. And so it has just been a game changer for me. And here's what I want to talk about. It, one of the things that we're talking about in this season, as you guys know, is little kids, big feelings. And the resounding consistency is you cannot tend to the feelings of your children if you cannot tend to your own. Mm. And what you guys are doing here is not only giving a resource, but you are giving care to moms and dads and caregivers to, to actually get resources and a strategy and a schedule that will allow them to pour out of fuller cups. And I just wonder, okay, maybe this is for Jennifer. Did you intend for that to be the case? Like, did you guys think like, we really need to give this to parents so that they can be healthier, more whole individuals, more rested so that they can actually care for their kids well and not maybe fall asleep and have some dangerous situations because they're so tired. <laughs> not only did we do it then, we yeah. do it now. We do it every day. We shout it from the rooftops. And one of the biggest messages that we have to parents is that your kid is strong, adaptable, and resilient. And so are you. And you are not going to ruin them. And the love that you have for them, if you're worried that you're doing it wrong, you're not because, you know, bad parents don't worry if they're doing it wrong. So just by virtue of asking the question, we're already way ahead of the game. But what we found is that if we could speak to the heart of parents, like we want to help parents speak to the hearts of their kids, then we were going to harness every digital capability that we possibly could to be a voice of encouragement and positivity for parents and caregivers of all varieties. So we sometimes say like, mom's on call, but what about the dads? Like, oh, we're the moms on call. Dads, yeah, yeah, you are yeah. so invited into That's this good. experience. We want mm. you. Single dads, grandparents, foster families, everybody works so good on a schedule. And what we try to do, it's so important, is to make it simple and accessible so that it wasn't like this overwhelming group of things you had to figure out how to put in your day. And in the toddler resources specifically, not only do we have combined schedules for toddlers and babies, because you seldom just have one baby all by themselves. Our households are, are filled. Laura has five kids. I have three. Mm. Like we get the chaos of that. So how can we really simply just explain when those hearts are open for instruction and what things could we put in them if we thought about the really important aspect of being able to believe in our kids' ability to do the things we're asking them to do. What would okay. we say? This makes me so teary. I um, <laughs> I have a friend. This makes me so teary because this is literally just la last week. I have a friend. Um, her and her husband have been desperately trying to have a kid for years and years and years and years. She's had a miscarriage and she got pregnant. And this was like, I mean, gosh, they call it like a geriatric pregnancy kind of thing. Like, I mean, she's in that boat. And she's just like believing. And so this sweet little girl was born last week and I've been watching her posts. Like she's been on stories like, Ooh, this has been a little hard. <laughs> like this, she had a C-section as well. And I said, hey, like I would just love to send you this resource that like just drastically changed my life. Obviously talking about the Moms on Call book. And, um, and then I also said this and I got it from y'all. I said, like your sweet miracle baby girl is capable of doing this. Like God has literally designed them for this. Like truly, genuinely. He has designed them. He has programmed and wired them. They're resilient. They're strong. They're smart. They're so stinking smart. And 
I feel like we live in a society that I don't, I just don't know what happened. Like we just like belittled these kids and the newborn process in the first six months. Like they're just like these little, I don't know, like little pets. And it's like, no, no, no. These are like humans designed in the image of God with the glory of God on the inside of them. And they can do this. And so when you said that, I just thought about her and I'm like, I'm like gassing her up. I'm like, you've got this. And I wrote a little note on the Amazon gift card, you know, that comes with it that, you know, she's just going to nail it. Like give her some time. She's going to yes. nail it. Yes. You know? Yes. Those are the voices we want to proliferate. And Laura oh. and I will say, and especially in our toddler conferences, we'll say, I want to, re- I want you to repeat after me. Mm. I am the parent. And the next generation is not going to be raised by personality, psychologists, influencers, or the internet. They're going to be Come raised on. by parents. Ooh. They're going to be raised by you. And you are capable of doing this. And that is the message Tony joined us. And we could just say that over yeah, and yeah. over again. And Laura came up with that. You. So I remember um, recommending the the book early on. I think Sammy, my son, was maybe like eight months or so. And um, I was like, oh, you got to get this. Oh, no, I know what it was. I just remembered. I posted about it. And I got so many DMs, like, because I just downloaded the app. And I was like, oh, I got the schedule now. It's on my phone, da, 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 da. And I remember having a person that's saying, like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't really know how you could just let your kid, like, cry it out like that. Like, that's just not... And it's funny because with my first kid, I did let her cry it out. I mean, I remember pressing the off button on that freaking monitor and I was like, well, this is it because I didn't have this resource, right? And I was so at the end of myself. And I responded very politely. I said, oh man, I'm so sorry that you've made an assumption. That's maybe a little sarcastic, but (laughs) Uh, I said, I'm so sorry that you've made an assumption that I've let my kid cry it out. Uh, I I would suggest that you maybe watch this video. And if I'm not mistaken, you, Laura, did a video, I think, or a post that was like a myth buster, like moms on yeah. calls are cried out method. Yeah. And I'm here to attest and testify that it is not. And Laura, I would love for you to answer that question and address that tension. Oh, I love it, Tony. Yes, we'll go deep, right? And that is one of those controversial kind of yeah. topics because, yeah. oh my gosh, our kids can't cry, right? They should never cry. They should never make sounds and they should be just happy all the time. Apply or- that to yourself, adults. Sorry. Hello. Right. Right. I'm done. I'm and done. that's that's the thing. Not all cry it out is the same. So we start off there. But we also talk about, look, if we create really good habits from the beginning. The, the crying part when it comes to that is like this big. Right. It's just a little bit so that the good habits that we create it can take forth and go so that by 12, 14 weeks of age, we've taken them out of that swaddle, right? We've already created a good rhythm. We've got these babies who are already sleeping well. They're on that routine. We've done everything to put in place for them to be successful in doing what they're perfectly capable of doing if we just get out of their way. Now, I'll say that first night, there may be some crying. Yeah, from them and from us, because I remember that first. I was like, oh, Jesus. Yes. It's hard, (laughs) right? It's hard. But everybody's crying. Yeah. But if we will just put all the things in place, take a few deep breaths, we'll find that they're crying, crying, crying. And about 6.2 minutes later. Literally. That was the thing that blew my mind. I was like, I'm short circuiting his growth. I'm short-circuiting his independence because of how I feel. It's Mm. like, it's, I am literally saying I need to go rescue him versus I have in my possession, I'm stewarding a child of God who is designed for this, smart and capable. Like, and I realized it was my feelings. I want to be with my baby boy. It comforts me. I've always prayed for and really wanted a boy 
this is mine. I was, I mean, honestly, keeping him away from his dad because I was like, this is my boy. You don't really know what to do. But what's great about the Moms on Call resources is everybody can download the app on their phone. Everybody has access to the schedule. Anybody can follow it. It's been so easy to have childcare. Even my parents have the app on their phone. Well, my mom does because my daddy don't know how to work his phone. But my mom has the app and she's like, this is crazy. She's like, I'll watch him any time. Let me tell you, I, yes. I, I told my sister, listen, your, your grandmama like you a little bit more. <laughs> she's have a little bit more time with you because she's like, this is incredible that he's on a schedule. He's not crying all the time because he knows what to expect. His needs are met when he yeah. expects them to be met. Like, oh, y'all, I'm such an advocate. I don't even know. What am I talking about? Gosh, we're on a <laughs> podcast. Okay. No, but you bring up a really I'm, good yes. point because yes. your voice is the first voice of hope that your child is ever going to hear. Yes. And so that's what we want to do. We want to infuse you with hope. And when we go into the in-home consultations all over, now Laura does tons of babies. I do tons of toddlers. And I will walk in and I'm so excited. And the thing that I'm excited about is I cannot wait for this kid to show his parents what he's capable of. Oh. And I just right? get so excited for that. And that's one of the first questions I will ask. Do you believe they can sleep in this curated, fantastic, loving environment that you picked out the toys and the pictures and the blankets one hallway away from his loving parents? Can he spend all night in that room? Can he do it? And every time without fail, those parents oh say, Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh. I know it may not seem like it and it may not sound like it, but in their heart, they know the truth. Now, getting from here to there takes. A lot like what you talked about before. I'll give you the steps and I'll support you and Moms on Call and our consultant network, which is the most amazing human beings who also love what they do, knows that the schedule keeper needs the support. So I will support you so you can support them because you're right. Let's talk real. Is it easy? No. It's not easy. Is it powerful? And- yes. 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 I love this conversation right now. I feel so I feel so validated in how much I love it. And I can't <laughs> wait to send everyone the link that I sent the books and say, I told you so. I told you so. I am a fan, a Raven fan. Um, okay, here's another question for you guys. Um, how do you guys talk about emotions with parents who are just like so hopeless in this? Like, I, I know that like every story is so different and kids are battling with different things from like just all sorts of things and even disability that prohibits them from being able to get on schedules in some ways. And so I wonder for those moms and dads and caregivers out there who feel so depleted and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing from newborn all the way up to toddler phase. Like what encouragement would you give them? We would absolutely say, look, find your helpers, right? We want to find your helpers, not too many. We don't want 900 of our closest, you know, Instagram followers partnering with us, right? If if they don't have a vested interest in the outcome, they don't get a seat at our table. So we're going to find two or three people that are like-minded in your parenting style, right, to come. And those are your people. Yes, we have consultants that can be those people, but those are your people. So we always say, look, we're going to limit the amount of voices that we allow to speak into how you do this because That's good. Tony, you and I and I we know. Jennifer, we all know that if we've got yep. 10 different people telling us 10 different things, yep. our confidence gets shaken, right? 100%. We're like, "Wait, do I do this or do I do this because somebody said place, I need to do eat, eat sleep play. what what yeah. what what?" <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so I was been exactly. there. Exactly. Yes. And so we start with kind of limiting those voices, but find your people. You need to have two or three people that can walk this out with you. We encourage our parents to parent out of the truth and not fear. So if you parent out of truth and not fear, you're going to make better decisions. So what is the truth? And so when we filter everything through there, that helps so, so, so much. And the third piece of that is like Jennifer said, you have to believe that your kids can do what we're asking them to do. Yeah. You know, I always say, and I know moms on call is known as a sleep method, right? And and everybody wants to talk about, you know, are you sleep training or did you sleep train or, and, and I, I kind of like, oh, wait, it's not really sleep training. 
if we create those good habits from the beginning, we don't have to train our kids to sleep. They, <laughs> they know how to sleep. It and they want it, right. They were born knowing how to yeah. sleep. So it goes back to, are we helping or are we getting in the way of them being yeah. able to do what they can do? And so, so having those things in place, I think makes everything else better. And, and then we're talking about, you know, as we go into that toddlerhood and we see these toddlers who are bouncing off the walls and running crazy and running the house, right? The first thing that we look at is, are they sleeping? Because if they're not sleeping well, we can't expect them to be, you know, halfway decent during the day, right? Halfway so we've got to get even the half. sleep piece. That's what I'm saying. If they're not sleeping well, it's really not, it's, it's just really not great for us to think that they're going to behave well. They're not right. sleeping well. They're not behaving well. Okay, well, I'm Because I'm grumpy. Yeah, I'm that's grumpy. Hard, yeah. Oh, I don't even want y'all to see me sleepy. I go goofy, then I go angry. I don't oh, know yeah. what that is about it, but I'm bouncing yep. off the walls like a small toddler and then yep. I get angry. So yep. I love that so much. And you're right, Laura. Like I can remember my daughter. I didn't have this method with her at the Moms on Call resources. And sis literally only ate macaroni and peanut butter and jelly, like sandwiches. That's it. That's all my parents would give her. I'm like, guys, I'm really trying to like diversify her palate. Sis was like, there's no way. I don't want anything else. My son, oh my goodness, because I followed like the method on introducing food at four months and all the things. I mean, he eats literally everything. Beets, avocado. He's got squash happening. He's got a little pesto pasta every now and again. I mean, like so such a diverse palate that's giving him all of these different nutrition that we had to sneak into my daughter's food. We're like hiding vegetables and macaroni coils like it was horrible. But and every kid's different in all their different ways. But I always do just wonder, like, man, if I would have had this for my daughter, how different it could have been. Um, and so, yes, you're right. It's not just the sleep met. I mean, I, I think a part of the book says, like, if you get this, day the daytime schedule is really the most important. They will follow suit at night. And he just, yeah. my son just really does. Um, I love that so much that you also said, I want to I wanna make sure we press into this, to lean into two or three voices. The information overload, we have talked about, this is a consistent theme on the podcast this season, like, we're so overwhelmed. We're so panicked. We're so worried as parents because we're like, okay, well, this people says this and this person says this. And then we're like, solid's at four months, solid's at six months. We're not sure. I don't know what to do. But trusting yourself, first of all, that God has adequately wired you as a parent mm. and praying and, and asking God to give you the discernment to figure out what you believe and what you want to stand on and what the truths are to you as a parent and then partner with like-minded people. I love that. Because ain't nothing worse than a person coming to your house saying, oh, is that how you do that? Oh, do you? Are you going to? I'm like, oh, you can go. You can go <laughs> immediately. No, I'm just kidding. I say it nicer. But I love that because what we're not saying is what they're doing is wrong oh. and that's not OK. And I'm the sleep. you're sleeping with your kid and this is bad. No, what we're saying is there's some things that I believe to be true as a foundation and I don't have time to brush my teeth or wash my face. So I for sure don't have time to argue with you about my beliefs. I'm trying right. to do what's best in my belief system for my kids. So I love that, Laura. And you are the best one. Mm -hmm. Parents are the best ones to make the decisions that they need to make for their household. Mm. I'm not going to make the decisions for your household, Tony. Yep. You're not going to make the decisions for my household because those are going to look a little bit different, even though, you know, yes, I know you love mom, so I'm calling. Yes, it's very similar in each household. But, but we need to make those decisions in our household for the kids that God gave us, right? Yes. And, you know, we talk about um, we have toddler by design, which is what we call the smart paradigm, where our kids, our toddlers have certain motivators. And those designs are social movement, and engineer, rule follower, or touch. Now, what? when we talk about that smart I'm paradigm, it's so much fun. Before you can even talk about these, you know, big feelings, right? We got to know how our kids are designed because that is then. Now that allows us to be able to speak and help our kids through those big feelings as they oh, that's have. good. Okay, wait, here's what I hear you saying, or just for the people in the back and for my own small brain. You're saying that all of our kids 
are designed differently to handle emotions in different ways. Yep. Yes. They process feelings differently, which we all are. Hello, somebody. I don't know why this didn't dawn on me before. And in order for us to adequately help walk our kids through their feelings, we actually have to know how they process their feelings. Yes. And that is the smart paradigm. We'll go over it again. It's S is social. M is movement. A is an engineer. R is rule follower. And T is touch. And these are the primary motivators that most toddlers are a combination of these things. You can be a social engineer. You can have movement and touch. But these are the primary motivators and why one kid is different than another, even in the same family. Or this method doesn't work with that child because your social child is looking for cues. They're looking for reactions. And they're so hard often to potty train. And they have these tantrums that look like their heart is broken, like they're going to win an Emmy. And, you know, the movement kids are just like, I just don't want to sit still long enough. Like I sleep great, but I just want you to put me down and I'm going to run. Why do they want to run away from me? Well, they're not running away from you. They just love to run. This is their motivator. We can put movement into potty training them. We can put movement into their feeding experience. Then what we can do is effectively be able to give them what they're looking for in this world. Touch kids who don't want to eat at the table, like sit with them. Just pat their leg under the table. Give them a little nose boop. They just want to know that connection is going to happen. And you can, we have a quiz, which is just so effective, which can give you percentages. But even parents listening right now. So sometimes it's okay just to say to them very simply, no, mommy decides that I'm good at it. Oh my mm. goodness. It because the rule, them. oh my gosh, I'm a, like, I'm, over here. I'm trying to, die. I'm trying to like <laughs> test my kids. I'm trying to test my kids. I need to get to the quiz. Yep. Here's the deal. I have a one month, well, no, he's one year and 14. I don't know how to, the, listen, honestly, I can't keep up at this point. I think he's like 14 months or something like that. Cause I can't add, but well, I haven't gotten to that resource yet, but I'm yeah. so excited. Cause I'm going to have to start potty training. And there's like potty training wise, like, oh my gosh, I am so excited. I'm a raving fan and I haven't even finished yet, guys. I haven't even gotten to the other resources. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But (laughs) that's like, I just, like my mouth was open for those of you just listening and not watching. But the entire time that Jennifer was explaining that my mouth was open because that's like a major key. We are, I think there's, there's a journey of parenting and helping our little kids with their big feelings. And the first step is probably like your own understanding of your feelings and being able to self-regulate. It's like the second step is diving into these resources and understanding like, hey, if you're stable, you can help your kids be stable. But y'all just added the third step out here and it's to make sure that the way we're helping our kids process through their feelings actually matches to their design. (gasps) We're going to put that in the show notes. We're going to, the people are going to go get it. And that's amazing. I'm so excited about taking the quiz for my kids. 
Yeah. I'm about and to we crush it. in those hug moments too, that when we looked at this episode, Laura and I were talking about this. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Um, we were talking about this and what we thought was, yes, little kids, big feelings, but what is the best thing that we can do to equip parents for big feelings? It's big truth. And every big feeling has a big truth behind it. So if we can, if we can organize our thoughts to give parents simple truths that all say, you'll be great at this and you'll figure it out to phrases that are going to be peppered throughout the parenting experience then we are equipping these kids to deal with those big feelings that are a part of humanity. I want them to know how to manage disappointment and frustration. And first it seems so, you know, large, so magnified, but if every big feeling had a big truth behind it, we knew when to deliver that big truth when their heart was open for instruction. It is just so powerful. Gosh. What do you have to say about that, Laura? That's good. It is. It's so powerful because I think, you know, right now we're living in a world where it's just go, 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 right? We get up in the morning and it's go, 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 get your shoes on, get your clothes on, got to eat, you got to eat, we got to get in the car, we got to go, we got to go. And, you know, and, and we're just going in a thousand different directions and in all these places. So the anxiety, we wake up and our houses are filled with this rush and anxiety. And I get it, I, we've all been there. And I think that being purposeful with, how we are running our day, setting time apart. Look, sometimes we can't help the chaos. It is chaotic. That's just reality. But if we, as as the parents, as the keeper of the routine, yeah. right? Yeah. If we can prioritize what's important to us as a family, what are those things? Sit down. Sit down and write those out. What are the priorities? Say no. When you need to say no, what, what? Yeah, you don't have to go to 10 different birthday parties on Saturday. You don't mm -hmm. have to. So to kind of set those priorities yeah. and talking about what that, that time when their hearts are open to instruction, being extremely purposeful and intentional. So we often tell our families that time is after bath or right when bath time starts until they go to bed. That is the time where their hearts are open to that instruction. So don't be on your phone. Don't answer another text message. Don't answer another email. Set that time apart. And if we start off early, by the time they're two, three years old, it's just habit. But I think that we as parents need to be intentional. And, and it's hard sometimes. I get it. it. We're running in 10 different directions and everything's just so chaotic, but we need to be intentional and prioritizing. You know, I, I had a, I spoke at, at some event and, and it was, we were talking about balance, right? You know, yeah. oh, everything has to be balanced. And I was like, uh, no, uh -uh. no, because yeah. if it's balanced, then nothing's getting the best of me. So Ooh. I have to prioritize. So some days, some days, my work's going to be in front of everything else. It's just for a season. It's just for an hour or two, but that's the way it is. But then when I'm all in in that evening time, when I get home and I'm laying down the computer and the phone, I, my priority is my family. And I'm going to be 100% in yep. for that. I I heard this saying maybe eight years ago now, break up with balance and marry priorities. Like we're mm. not the little women with the little weights trying to figure mm. out what gets our attention. We are the women that says, okay, we're at the park right now. And right now I'm trying to make sure that my kid doesn't go upside down on the slide. Okay. Exactly. Like that's yeah. what I'm doing. That's my priority right now. I love that. Yeah. Oh, well, you guys already answered my last question, which was going to be a practical tip. That little paradigm thing. I can't wait. Yes. I cannot wait to quiz my kids and to give them the individual and adequate attention that they deserve because they're worthy of that and that I get to meet because of God's design in them. That just makes me so excited, you guys. Okay, here is the last thing I'm going to ask y'all to do. Anyone could do this. Maybe I'll say, Jennifer, can you pray for the listener that is just like, I would say there's probably two listeners that one is like, I'm pregnant 
and I'm freaking out because I do not know what life's going to look like with this other kid or with this first kid or the person that's in the thick of it and they've tried everything and they feel alone and they don't have a village and they're like, I just need some help and I need some relief. Can you pray for them? Absolutely. Father God, you are the God of the unknown and we're safe with you. And so I ask that you would speak to the heart of the woman who feels like she doesn't know what tomorrow will bring. But Lord, I pray that you'll be in her tomorrow, that you will whisper to her heart, that you will wait for her with every challenge and capability that you have woven into her, Father God. And in any place where she feels like she is not enough, Lord, you will be enough. You are our enough. And Father God, for those who are in the thick of things, I pray, Father God, that the voice that they hear is the voice of encouragement, that there will therefore be no condemnation that comes from inside the house. But Lord, that you would come and your word would speak fully and completely to that heart so that they know that they are a child of the ever-living, present God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and that your love for them will reach into every anxiety that they have in every moment and quiet their heart and mind with your love, Lord. Just pour over them with your love. That is what you tell us to do, Lord. We can pour our heart out to you and you pour your love on us and fill us, every last one of us, God. And may every moment, the ones that when we feel the worst and the ones where we feel the best, bring you honor and glory for that's how you designed it. We are yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jennifer, oh my gosh. (laughs) Jennifer's a little pastor over there. What are you guys doing? She is. She is a pastor. Okay, Laura, last thing I'm going to say before we leave. When I was in the thick of trying to figure out how to get my kid to sleep, Um, I think it was probably like the right around the five week mark because I was like, I'm desperate. I did probably one of the craziest things, which was to reach out to the founder of an incredible organization, a huge company, Moms on Call. And honestly, like I didn't even realize how crazy it was. It's like me being like, man, I really just don't like this item from Target. I'm having a real hard time with it. And I'm just like, I need to talk to the CEO of Target. I need to talk to the CEO. I don't know where he at, where he or she is at. (laughs) Like, I literally did that. I was like, Laura, founder of Moms on Call, please email me back, okay? Like, (laughs) that's how desperate I was. And you did. And, oh my goodness. Like, you could have done, you could have been doing anything. You could have been busy with managing a freaking multi-country international organization. Like, handling your own five kids or your husband. I mean... It was so meaningful to me. I probably, if I was in my sane mind, I would not have done that. But I just was so desperate. And I just want to publicly thank you because as a founder, as a speaker, as a all the podcast, all the things I get to do, it is so incredibly difficult to respond to every person. It is so hard. And I just want to thank you so much for being intentional and like caring for me as just like a newborn mom because that's all I was. I just was like, I'm drowning. And I just want to thank you publicly for that. Thank that, you, that Tony. Meant the world to me. You know, yeah. we always say, look, God meets you right where you are. So at two o'clock in the morning, as you are holding that baby and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to sleep again. God meets you right where you are. And we are convinced that we're doing exactly what God purposed for us to do so many years ago. And so, yes, we try, whether it's me or Jennifer or Kayla, yeah. you know, Or Olivia, we try our hardest to answer every single question and direct message that comes in because you are worth it. You are desperate. So no matter how many other things you've read or how many other people are around you, when you are in the thick of it, just like you were, you need somebody to come alongside you. And that's what we do. And I'm so grateful. I am so thankful for Tony, what you do and you know, I'll never forget you come in to, you know, to talk at the school and just listening and seeing how you resonated 
with those middle school kids, right? Uh, at Loving Good, right? Oh, so at, yes. at, at Loving Good and, and <laughs> resonating with those yeah. kids and watching you because you were pretty busy at that time too. Yeah. And you had a kid and you're, you know, you were single at that point yeah. trying to you uh-huh. know, take care of 10,000 things along with yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. But what I saw that day when mm. you would come and speak, you did the same exact thing. Because you could have been 10,000 other places. You could have came and spoke for 10 minutes and left. But what I remember is you standing at the end, right by the stage, and those girls coming up to you one after another, after another, and you speaking into who they were. And you stayed until every last kid heard that they were worthy and they were loved. So, you know, there's something about that. So, Tony, thank you. Thank you for speaking in to so many people. Yes, you go to McEachern and, <laughs> and you would speak for Jim. And I'm sure he'll he'll be like, I gotta, I gotta get with Tony and get her back up here, right? Come on, Jim. So I'm sure he's gonna be texting <laughs> you any second. Um, and so yeah. watching you do what you do yeah. is incredible. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you for continuing to be a voice. Yeah. to these young people. So not only the parents and not only, you know, the adults, yeah. but when I've watched you with these preteens and teenagers do yeah. what you do, it's pretty incredible. So mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you thank for you continuing to that. do what God has put in you to do. Yeah. Woo! I didn't cry on every episode, y'all. Every single one. <laughs>